Okay, so for today's topic, for our first class, EPPM 3043, Innovation and Change Management, our topic today is Introduction to Change and Innovation in the World of Business. So before we start, I would like to introduce myself. Um, my name is Shazlinda Maisof. Okay, you can call me uh, Poinshas. Uh, and I am not a full-time lecturer at UKM. Uh, I am a part-time lecturer, basically. I'm the managing director and senior partner of Ichigo Services. And um, but I was a full-time lecturer at FEP UKM until 2018 before I quit my job. Uh, I quit the full-time position and uh, to run my own business. Uh, but still, after um, leaving UKM, I still teach as a part-time lecturer. Before joining UKM, I was a senior engineer at Alps Electric Malaysia St. John Berhad. This is a Japanese multinational company uh, in Nilai. Uh, and uh, as for my academics credentials, I graduated in MBA, Management of Technology at Kyushu University, Japan. Uh, my first degree was in electrical and information engineering, same university. Uh, so basically, I have spent a total of six years living in Japan. Uh, so I am quite conversant in uh, Japan and also Japanese culture. So uh, usually in my class, I would um, tell a lot of stories. Uh, based on my experience, based on my readings uh, about Japan and so forth. I also travel a lot. Oh, by the way, my company, Ichigo Services, is uh, a travel consultancy company. So I do travel a lot. This is me since I don't publish my face here. So this is how I look. Um, and currently, I'm pursuing PhD at management, uh, PhD in management at University Technology Petronas. Okay, so before we start, I would like to listen from you why change is important since we are in the topic of change management. Why do you think change is important? You can uh, put your answer in the chat or you can also uh, unmute your microphone to speak. Why do you think Change is important. No change, change in development. development. Sorry? Can you repeat? Uh, no change, change. No, no development. Yes, exactly. If you don't change, there will be no development. You will not develop yourself. You will not develop your organization. That's right. Anything else? Anybody else? Uh, like China, if we, we, we not change, we will like, like North Korea. If, if we do, not uh, uh, open before. You, if you don't change? Uh, like China, like China, if mm -hmm. we not change, to open open our uh, country. Mm -hmm. and now we still like North Korea. Oh, you will be like North Korea, yeah, because uh -huh. yes, because um, uh, China was a closed economy because of the the belief of communism. Mm -hmm. uh, and after you open your economy, uh, mm -hmm. so you have flourished, very very well developed. Yes, you're correct. We also have some. Change makes innovation. Yes, correct. Change makes innovation. Change is important because only through change, only through meeting the challenge of change do we move closer to self-actualization. Yes, exactly. Yes. Because without change, we don't we do not know about ourselves. To change, we, we need to know the current status of ourselves. 
then only we can change to a better person. It goes the same to organization as well. Okay, so change is very important whether you are a person, whether you are a, a business, a company, or you are an organization, whether you are a government, or whether you are the whole nation, even the world. Okay, so change is inevitable. Now, what forces us to change? What makes us change? What makes us have to change? Anyone? Uh, maybe when we cannot overcome some uh, difficulties and we need to, we have to uh, solve it and we need to change. Okay, and, because... And sometimes we cannot understand something else. We need to change our mind to think about it. Yes, exactly. When you are stuck on something, so you have to change your direction of your path. Okay, so that the event of being stuck at somewhere will force you to change, whether to take uh, another direction or, yeah, sometimes you have to go back Sometimes you have to move forward or sometimes you have to take another direction. Yeah. yeah. Uh, for our company or for our country, um, the benefit is a uh, reason. A uh, very important reason. Very important? Reason. Uh, yeah, the benefit, interest, money. Money. Oh. Yeah, for our company or uh, our uh, country. For your country. Okay. Uh -huh. Yes, exactly. I I did see the difference um China. Uh, I don't live in China. I never have I have been to China uh -huh. uh, once. I have to I have been to China once. Uh but I I also have seen the change uh in China. Basically, I mean the, the largest the biggest change is the economy. But I am yeah. also sure that uh, there are also changes in social, um, mm -hmm. social, and perhaps also a bit of culture in China. Mm -hmm. uh, before before you uh, open the economy to the outside world. Yeah. Okay. Self motivated makes us to change. Yeah. You but you have to have a very strong motivation to make yourself uh, change. Technology forces us to change. Yes, in one sense, yes. Because before we have the technology, social media, for example, we talk to each other. But after having social media, which is supposed to connect us more, but it seems like social media is keeping us apart. So it has, it in one way, it has forced us to change. And for businesses, if they do not adapt to uh, new technology, they will, it is very, um, very impossible for them to change. By adapting uh, new technology, they can change. <clears throat> okay. Yes, the speed of social development is very fast. So why organizations need to change? The answer is only one, to survive. Because if you have a business, if you are doing business, there are a lot of other people who are doing business, perhaps the same thing. They are selling the same thing. They are offering the same services as you. So the competition is very high. And how, how can you catch the attention of your, uh, of your customers or your future customers? You have to be different. So to be different, you have to change. Okay, so you have to have your competitive advantage so that you can survive in your business world. So if you, as a student, you also need to have your own competitive advantage. How can you approach your uh, future employer okay, to take you as their employee? So you need to be different from the others. So how to be different? If you are, if you don't feel like you are different from the others, you have to make a change. So how to make a change? There is no other way but 
being innovative? The answer to change is you have to be innovative. So now, um, that goes another problem. What is innovation? Okay, so what is the definition of innovation? So the definition of innovation, as written here, the process of translating an idea or invention into a product or service that creates value. So if you only have a good idea, okay, say you, uh, maybe um, um, like me, if I go driving, usually I will get new ideas. Uh, sometimes to me, it's a very good idea. That is what we call as being creative, creativity, just having your idea, the process of getting a new idea. It, the sources of idea can be anything. But getting the idea is the process. The, the process of getting a new idea, a, a good idea, is what we call as creativity. But translating that idea into a product or service, that brings value, that brings meaning to someone, to other people, is what we call as innovation. Okay, If you only have the idea, but you don't translate it into something that brings meaning, that is useful to someone else, then it is not an innovation. You are not being innovative yet. Okay, Until you translate it into something that is useful to others, whether it, it, it is in a form of product or in a form of service, then only you can call it an innovation. Okay? Because there are a lot of creative ideas, there are a lot of good ideas, but how can we measure whether it is a good idea or not a good idea? So the only way to measure it is if the idea brings value to you or to someone else. Okay, it can be, the value can be in terms of money. The, um, the value can also be in terms of time. Okay, um, it, it can be in terms of uh, relationship. It can be in terms of process and a lot of things. As long as it brings value to someone, then it is something that we call as innovation. Okay, now, so... These are the, what we call as the four P's of innovation, okay? Uh, the four P's are the product, position, process, and also paradigm. Okay, so what, um, what are these? What, what, what does it mean by product innovation, uh, product also means services innovation. Uh, what does it mean by position innovation? What does it mean by process innovation? What does it mean by paradigm innovation? And what does this mean by incremental radical, incremental radical, incremental radical, incremental radical? Okay, so if you look around you, you will see a lot of things that are uh, innovative. Okay. So tell me, what are the things that you think uh, that you have you have seen or you have uh, experienced that you think is innovative? Anybody wants to share? Anyone? Have you ever seen or have you ever experienced something that you think very innovative? Anybody? VR. What is VR? 
for the sake of others. What is VR? Virtual reality. Virtual reality, augmented reality, AR. <clears throat> electric car. What is the situation of uh, the usage of electric car in China? Are there a lot of electric cars in China? Okay. So is it convenient to use electric cars in China? Do you have charging station a lot? Very popular. Oh, okay. Okay. Do we have students from countries other than China? In this class? Yes. Uh... Uh, we have a uh, uh, Indonesia girl, but I I'm not sure she uh, she she coming or not. Oh, okay. Okay. So, yes, hmm. Okay. Only one, only one from Indonesia. Yeah. Others are from China. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Some city have. Okay. Can you share which city or which area do you come from in China? Give me the huge one. Don't give me the small one. I might not know. You come from Beijing or you come from uh, Shanghai. Chengdu, okay. Guangdong, okay. I think a lot of people go shopping in Guangdong, right? It's a center for okay. shopping, is it? Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Beijing. Hunan, okay. Hebei, okay. Chongqing. Anhui, okay. So you come from really different Guangzhou, okay. Guangzhou is quite uh, popular among Malaysians. Shandong, okay. So you come from uh, Yunnan, okay. From different parts of China. Yeah. Okay. That's good. So you can share a lot of stories about China. You, you have to update me stories about China <clears throat> because you come from different areas so it must be different kinds of development, different kinds of environment. Yeah. So uh, I've never been to Beijing. I've only been to Shanghai and uh, Nang Nanking. Oh, Nanjing. Nanjing, Nanjing, yeah. yeah. Nanjing. Uh, I went to the University of Nanjing for exchange, oh, so okay. from there through Shanghai. Mm -hmm. mm. <clears throat> so that that's it. I I want I want to visit Xi'an, but uh, uh, but I've never I've I haven't had the chance yet. But I would love to visit China, um, different parts of China one day. Maybe you can be my tourist guide if I go to China. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so what is, what are your plans after finishing your studies in uh, UKM? This is your second year? Uh, yeah. So you have another one year, right? Yeah. So what are your plans after finishing your studies in UKM? Continue study. Yeah, continue. Continue study. <laughs> Where? Uh, UKM. Uh, UKM. No, no, no. I want to other other university study for uh, for master. Other universities where in Malaysia or other countries? Uh, maybe uh Malaysia. Uh, UM. I want the application for for UM. UM. Oh, okay. Yeah. Why do you Why do you choose Malaysia for your next? Uh, level of study. 
Now, um, that's the uh, truth of why I want to do application on the country. Uh, it's just choice of one. Choice of one? Yeah. Because UKM uh, rank is so high. Yeah. Uh, but UM is higher, I think. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, when I uh, when I was in UKM as a full time um uh lecturer, I okay. used to teach uh international students as well. But at that time, many of my students, uh, international students, after finishing their undergraduate studies in UKM, most of them, uh, those who further their study, most of them uh went overseas, like they went. Some went to Australia. Some went to UK to do masters. <laughs> So, mm -hmm. so I wonder why you want to stay uh, in Malaysia to further your study. Is there anything <laughs> that bothers you going overseas or is there something attractive in Malaysia that makes you want to stay? I want to stay in the area. I don't want to Europe. You don't want to go to Europe? America. <laughs> because now it's so dangerous. Okay, because of the dangerous situation, because of COVID-19. Yeah. Okay, yeah. all right. Okay. Okay, so, <clears throat> okay, now let's go back to our uh, our four piece of innovation. How do you, how do you, uh, how do you pronounce Gansu? Is it Gansu? Yeah, yeah. Gansu? yeah, yeah. 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 correct. Okay. Uh, a few years back, I went uh, to learn, I went to a Mandarin class to learn Mandarin, just a little, I can speak just a little, but uh, I can speak Japanese and I can read uh, the kanji, the, the character. So uh, some characters I can read, uh, some have different uh, meaning, Jap Japanese uh, kanji and also the Chinese kanji, some have different meaning, but generally I I can um, predict what the meaning is sometimes, sometimes uh, no. Uh, but what I found difficult about Chinese uh, Mandarin lang language is the pronunciation is different. Mm, yeah. Uh, so yes. if you pronounce it differently, so it will bring a it will bring you a different meaning. So I don't want to insult you with a <laughs> with a wrong pronunciation. So that's why I ask. Okay, anyway, coming back to our four piece of innovation. Yeah. So what, what is the meaning of product innovation, position innovation, process innovation, and paradigm innovation? Okay, so that brings us to the next slide. Okay, so product innovation means there's changes to the product and service. Okay, so uh, we will discuss this one further, but um, uh, this is something that you always see. Uh, a business they will not uh, they will not uh, sell or make one product all the way okay, there mm -hmm. is some points in uh, their business that they have to change to do some changes to do some improvements to their product or their services to fit mm -hmm. the needs of their clients yeah. and then um, process innovation is the changes to the methods of conducting the process when you're making something or where, when you are offering services, there are some processes that is involved. So that process, if you do some innovation for it, you do some improvement on it, it can make your work more efficient. It can save more time, which means you are saving more money, uh, which means it will bring you more money for your business. So process innovation is, is also very important for a, a business or a company. Now, the third one, the position innovation. The position innovation uh, means uh, changes to the context of a product or service being introduced. Okay, so I will elaborate this more uh, in the next slide. But uh, it's how uh, position innovation means if you are doing a business, you are trying to change the for example, the image of the product, the branding of the product, or um, the perception of your um, customers towards the product or the services. 
So you are trying to put your the position, you you are positioning your product differently. Okay. Uh, and the last one, paradigm innovation, uh, is the changes to mental model that becomes the framework of an organization. This is truly groundbreaking, totally different. You may need uh, a new business model. You may need a new way of thinking uh, to do this kind of innovation. Okay, let's go to elaboration of position innovation. Okay, this is very very uh, familiar formulations on the 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 picture on your left, but uh, I am not sure if you have seen this kind of mm -hmm. ice cream. Have you seen this? No. 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 This yes. is what we call as ice cream Malaysia. So. Uh, I'm telling. Uh, I'm I'm trying to tell you a kind of culture uh, that mm -hmm. we have uh, during our childhood in Malaysia, and why this is what we call as the ice cream Malaysia. It's a kind of ice cream. This is actually mm -hmm. a plastic. Okay. Mm -hmm. So um, usually we will put um, um, uh, sweet drinks it can be tea it can be coffee it can be chocolate it can be milo it can be anything yeah it can be corn corn juice or something something sweet you put in the plastic and first of all you need to tie the plastic uh, sorry this is um here okay uh, that's the end of the plastic you don't have to tie it it's the end of the plastic so you put the juice here the sweet juice in here and then at the end here you will tie it you will tie it okay and you will put this in the uh, refrigerator okay so it becomes uh, icy okay it, it becomes like an ice cream so how do we eat it uh, the end here okay what you what we usually do is we will just um, tear it using our teeth and then we will suck uh, the ice cream from from the tear okay, from the uh, hole that we have tapped using our teeth okay so uh, this is the kind of, of ice cream that we enjoyed during our childhood usually if we say ice cream Malaysia it means that the ice cream that the children like okay so I think almost all Malaysians have 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 uh, have enjoyed this ice cream during the childhood Okay, that's one. Okay, your right side is a kind of ice cream. Okay, it's Hagen Dazs. Have you heard of this brand? Yes. yes. Uh, have you tried Hagen Dazs? Yes. Okay, do you like Hagen Dazs? Yes. Okay, Hagen Dazs. Delicious. Yeah, Hagen Dazs is another kind of ice cream. And the image of Hagen Dazs is. It's an ice cream for, for the adult. We don't expect, uh, in Malaysia at least, we don't expect that this ice cream are for children because it's very expensive. Okay, You buy four pins for 99. For 99 ringgit, I am a traveler. I can buy a flight ticket going to another state in Malaysia. Okay, uh, one mm -hmm. way or sometimes return ticket. Okay, so 99 ringgit is quite expensive, especially mm -hmm. for a children, for a child. Okay, to spend. So, actually, uh, in the past, okay, during the early years of Hagen Dazs, this is a story about Hagen Dazs. So, during the early years of Hagen Dazs, it's actually a kind of ice cream that everybody enjoy, especially the children. It's like it's something like ice cream Malaysia. If you, if people mention Hagen Dazs, it means another kind of ice cream for the children. Okay, but um. The people in Hagen Dazs, uh, they are thinking that if you sell to the children forever, it mm -hmm. means that you will only earn, if like ice cream Malaysia, for one ice cream, you can only earn one ringgit. This is actually expensive for ice cream Malaysia. Mm -hmm. When yeah. I was a child, ice cream Malaysia is only about 20 cent or 30 mm -hmm. cent or 10 cent. But now, because of a uh, higher cost of living, it becomes one ringgit. Okay, but uh, so if forever they sell ice cream to children, okay, they 
will not get more value from their sales. So what they need to do is they need to, to do some position innovation. They need to change the positioning of their product. They still sell ice cream under the name of haagen but they need to change the image. They need to change the perception of their customers toward their product that their um, ice cream brings a higher value and it is targeted for the adult rather than the children. So what they do is, if in Malaysia, maybe you don't see, but if you go overseas, uh, there are uh, rum, uh, haagen uh, they put some alcohol in it, okay? So if it's something with alcohol, it means it's something for the adult, okay? So uh, that, is, that is one characteristic that they have. Another one is, if you want to enjoy haagen usually you will, uh, it is something like a cafe. It is something that, somewhere that you can enjoy. Well, now because it is more commercialized, because they have already established their brands, they are also selling in supermarkets, but still there are, uh, people have this connotation that if uh, you speak about haagen it means that it's a very high-end ice cream, ice cream for people who have a lot of money. Okay, so because yeah. they have already established their brand. So uh, basically, if you say Hagendas, it's something that you enjoy. It's 